Hey guys, GMX here. Welcome back to our uh, Let's Play as Pericles uh, of Greece. We are on our fourth episode here, and we are starting at one turn 160. Uh, thank you guys for all the support on this series. I really appreciate it. We have no new commenters uh, for new cities that need to be named, but if you would like a city named after you in my uh, empire, go ahead and comment down below. I'm going to be doing this episode a little bit differently, where I'm going to highlight the major points in the empire building as well as throughout the game, highlight some of the wonders that we're going to be building, some of the districts that we're building, and some of the decision making that I make. Um, go ahead and comment down below if you like that style, and if you comment, uh, you get a chance to have a city named after you. Um, I think this is going to be the last of the last... I'm going to make two more episodes. This one's going to cover probably turns 160 through about 200, and then going past that, um, we'll do a final episode next time. So make sure you comment down below and like and subscribe so you guys can get filled in on the rest of the episodes. All right, let's get into the episode. All right, getting back into the episode here we have gotten um, some harbors up and everything like that working on our diplomatic quarter we are getting some cities founded and the reason we're building these cities is that we can get some nice uh, national parks actually um, national parks are actually really easy to get in tundra areas especially since they have mountains and everything like that like right here you could get a national park just instantly off the bat if you've met, found a city so if i settle a city here i can get a plus four harbor and then get a really nice national park right here and then maybe even another one right here and then even another one right here so we're gonna work towards that probably get another settler somewhere up here i actually might buy one up here how much does it cost to buy one so i have to build quite, uh, get quite a bit more money but i'm earning quite a bit of money so i might actually do that and i might do the same up here uh, just buy them instead. I'm also going to be putting one right here because I think I can get, if I look at appeal, I think I can get two national parks right here with just settling on this diamonds. So that'll be really nice for us. It's also really important for us to get the uh, fishing boats online because we still have the Pantheon for uh, God of the Sea, which gives us plus one production for fishing boats. So I really need to get these fishing boats online. And I think I'm going to also do the same thing here in Seth. Make sure I take this uh, tile here, here, and here. That'll give us plus three production right there. And this, since it is a reef tile, I'll actually get plus two production, which will be really awesome. So we're going to go do that as well. Uh, we do also want to get up our medieval walls and our renaissance walls because that provides tourism per turn. As you can see, it uh, provides plus two tourism after advancing the conservation civic, which we're going to be getting because the conservation civic is required to be able to build national parks and also build forests with our builders. All right, we just unlocked humanism here, which gives us access to art museums and archaeological museums. And I think I'm going to be going straight for archaeology museums. Uh, those are going to help us out and get some uh, archaeologists up. And those archaeologists are going to be really great for us to be able to... Uh, get some more tourism per turn. All right, let's settle this city right on the diamonds here. Uh, we can pick up the maze and stuff as well. And this will be a great foothold, like we said, for the appeal uh, of some national parks later in the game. First off, this city is not going to be very great, but we'll expand it and hopefully make it a lot better. Now I'm going to actually go straight for natural history. This way I can pick up archaeologists here as I just unlock the archaeology museums. So I might pick up um, in some of my uh, Acropolises, I might pick up art museums first so I can actually start earning them because I do believe great people We are actually getting close to getting great artists and great musicians online as well uh, We do have India who is earning some great writers at this point as well, but not many One thing I'm highly debating as well is that I could, do need to get a couple holy sites up The holy sites are gonna be really beneficial to getting up naturalists Naturalists cost around 600 faith per turn and increase every time you get a new one But right now I don't have any holy sites generating me any faith. So I need to think about that and where I want it. The issue is in Permagon, uh, Pergamon. Yeah, Permagon, Pergamon. Yeah, pronunciation's not great for me. Uh, I have some great um, holy sites here. The thing is, is that's gonna take straight away from my national parks here. Um, so if I wanna plan it out, I could get a national park Let's go ahead and do some pins here. This is going to add quite a few pins, but therefore there's no great place for us to put a holy site in this city, unfortunately, as well as that would help us out right now. I don't think this is the city to set up a, a holy site as of quite yet. So since I have conservations quite a ways off civic wise anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go either for a harbor or for a commercial hub. And I have a plus three harbor here that will help me get a lot more gold per turn. And that way, once I unlock archaeologists, I can actually purchase my archaeologists for, uh, I think it's 1600 gold. So let's go ahead and do that harbor. All right, and we actually have two envoys right now that we can send out. And right now, as Pericles, oh, Pericles, sorry, we have a special unique, um, as Pericles, we have Surrounded by Glory, which we have plus 5% of the culture per city state you are suzerain of. So that'll give us actually bonuses from 
um, our city states we're super center of. And right now we currently have the Diplomatic League card in. So our first envoy to each city state counts as two envoys. That means with our two envoys here, we want to put ones in city states we have nothing in right now. So I think Buenos Aires is a great one, as well as um, get, doing a Mog or Fez. Or Leventa would work too. Let's go ahead and do Leventa. We can actually get suzerainty of it pretty quickly. They only have four envoys in there. A cod might be as good one as well, but I think we need to do actually. Let's go on Tannin Arevo. Let's go ahead and take it out of that and do on Tannin Arevo because that'll give us actually culture as well. Because uh, the envoy, the first bonus earned is plus one culture in the capital and in every amphitheater as well. So we'll actually gain some culture with that as well. All right, and right now I have a new governor title slot available, a promotion I can give. And what I think I'm actually going to do is Reina right here. Uh, can get the promotion of Harbor Master, which a double bon adjacency bonuses from commercial hubs and harbors in the city. But in the city it is in Nero actually only has a plus two harbor. So if I look around, I actually have a plus five harbor. I'm pretty sure. No, plus four harbor right there. So what I might do uh, is go ahead and actually put it in Sparta. That way I get this will turn into a plus eight harbor right there with that new promotion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove uh, Reina from here and assign her into Sparta. Now that she's put in there, we're going to go ahead and get the Harbor Master uh, promotion and do that. Now I'll look at these delicious fishing tiles we have online here. So that God of the Sea uh, Pantheon is really helping out here, giving us some extra production in here. Getting the city up to 12 production, not great for a city, but it's going to be good. Um, I think we really need to get a harbor probably up in Seth. Uh, that way we can get like a, if we get a shipyard, uh, that'll really help out, us out for getting production in this city. So I'm thinking this settler is going to come up and explore this area right here. There's some fresh water we can get over here. I knew there were some barbarians around here as well, but if we can get three or four cities up in here and get some nice, nice national parks up, that will really help us out in the late game. Now we need to choose our technology. Let's go ahead and start working on mass production. That'll really help out those shipyards, help us with production for the adjacency. So if we get a shipyard in, uh, in Sparta, we can get almost uh, plus eight production just based on that, which will be really awesome. Now we have two more envoys. Uh, we're going to do the same kind of thing where we're going to put it in where we don't have any... Uh, envoys in there currently so we're going to do probably a kid and then we actually met Bandar Brunei so we're going to put one in Bandar Brunei and then we'll get two envoys in each one of those which will be really nice all right we actually just unlocked our first great uh admiral uh Ferdinand Magellan uh let's see he grants one free copy of a luxury resource on your tile and then gain 300 gold so that's actually pretty nice so let's go ahead and get that and then let's see what current luxuries do we have that we want to actually pick up potentially so looking around my empire it does not look like i have any amber which can spawn on water so i kind of want to look around and use the um map search to see if i can see any amber and there is some amber but is unfortunately on a uh land tile not a coastal tile so i'll have to explore a little bit more um i don't know if i want a duplicate of either turtles or uh whales uh, and there's no pearls either that i'm seeing either which is quite unfortunate so since I can't use him for anything right now, I'm actually going to go ahead and have him just explore around. That way I can get some more vision of the map. So we're actually going to pace out Poundmaker. They made a war with me mainly because I have an alliance with someone else. So it was pretty much a net neutral war that did not matter to me. So I kind of don't really care if I'm at war with them and I kind of want to get out of that. So I just declared neutral peace. Uh, had no issue there. Uh, was really easy to declare, uh, declare that peace was no issue at all. All right, we are now entering the industrial era, and a lot of our alliances ran out at the same time. We actually unlock mercantilism as well. Very cool. That gives us access to privateers, actually, if we want. And one thing I'm actually going to go for is I think I'm actually going to put in triangular trade. That'll help us out a bunch with our trade routes there. Um, and one thing we might want to look at, too, is eventually getting up naval infrastructure. That'll help us get our gold up a quite a bit. Um, right now, I think campus adjacency bonuses are good for us, mainly because uh, keep, that keeps us in the, uh, the scientific game. That way, we're still earning some science per turn. Uh, right now, we're on the low end, but that is quite all right by me. Um, I don't think we need colonialization because I think we're going to be buying our settlers more than we are going to be building them because it takes quite a bit of production to build them right now. So choosing our dedication, uh, let's go ahead and look at these. We got Hik Sink Jacones, um, discovering a new continent. I don't think that'll be really something we see. We've discovered a big portion of the map. Uh, Reform the Coinage is something we'll definitely want to have. Um, Harpeed Esteem would be pretty good. Um, I think in Reform the Coinage, we can keep one trade route within our empire to get uh, the Aerosaur pretty regularly, and then we'll send the rest of our trade routes out to different empires. That way we can get that uh, tourism bonus from having a trade route with other civs. Now, when choosing our alliances, we got one, two, three, three cities that are uh, three places that are happy with me. The rest are pretty neutral. So let's go ahead and look and see if we can actually get our relationships up as well. Um, so Dido is displeased with us because we have uh, displeased because we have many coastal cities. Well, we're not going to change that. It's a coastal map. Can't really do anything. And then we also culture bombed one of their cities. Apparently, I don't remember doing that. So uh, that kind of bites, but it, it is what it is, Dido. Sorry about that. Um, but favorite trade deals to them, if we send them, say, um, some 
if we send them Diplo favor like this, that actually can improve that. And then we might be able to get more neutral with them. So they might be more happy with us. Right now, we actually don't have a delegation with them either. So that's quite unfortunate. We met them pretty early on. I should have just sent a delegation really early on. So that's my fault. Uh, now let's look at Gandhi, see if we can improve them. Uh, they dislike civilization with low productivity. Okay, well, with shipyards, we'll actually get that up. So that might be good for us. Uh, but we could go ahead and um, send them 10 Diplo favor as well. That might actually help out our uh, stuff as well. And we also, it's really important to get up open borders. Open borders are really essential for tourism per turn. Um, I think there's, let's go ahead and do this. And then I think it'll show you... On the culture screen, you can actually see what tourism you're getting from each civilization. So if you look at Gandhi here, we have both a trade route and open borders with them. And we actually get tw plus 25% from each one of those, which is really, really crucial for getting up your empire, uh, maintaining open borders. That really gets that tourism up a lot quicker. And we really need to start doing that now. We only have 44 tourism per turn. We really need to expedite that. I actually only got 18 tourism per turn. Uh, we need to expedite that quite quickly. So with Gandhi, after that trade, we actually got plus four trade deals with them. Let's send in a couple more Diplo favor, uh, 10 more and see if they will enjoy that and if that will help out a relationship. So yeah, that did. Uh, so hopefully next time we can get alliance with them. Let's look at the other people who are dissatisfied with us. That would be someone like Poundmaker. Uh, Poundmaker was allied with the uh, enemy, that's kind of stuff. Uh, so let's see if a trade route can be done with them. Let's go ahead and get open borders at first. They will want us to pay some gold. So let's go ahead and send them instead. We send them... 20 Diplo favor with this, they probably will be happy with us and have favorable, favorable trade deals with us. So yeah, now we have favorable trade deals. We actually might be able to get a cultural alliance with them or something like that. Uh, now let's go to Montezuma. With Montezuma, they see our luxuries and does not have the right tar is does not have as a right target. Now let's look at Montezuma, who uh, we actually have a minus six penalty for seeing that they we have luxuries they do not, so they want to attack us for that. So if we make some trade deals with them, maybe they will actually help us out. Uh, th it'll help out our relationship. So they would want one gold. So let's go ahead and send them 20 Diplo favor as well. Uh, this Diplo favor uh, with the latest patch, it does not, does not mean as much to other civilizations. So we can actually sell it off and not be too much at too much disadvantage. And that'll help us out with a relationship here. So hopefully they will like us better. And since we have open borders and favorable trade deals, hopefully we become friendly with them. Now let's move on to Lady Six guy. Uh, she has minus seven first impressions of us. I think that's because we didn't send them a delegation. Uh, I need to be a little bit better on that. That's something uh, I always forget sometimes. Uh, I don't know why. It's something very e easy to do. Uh, currently we do have open borders with them, so we can't get that. But if I give them 10 double favor, they might actually have more favorable things with me. So I need to send them a little bit more to get net neutral. So let's go ahead and send them 15. So uh, now I have plus nine. So hopefully that'll be in my favor and they'll be net neutral and then we can declare friendship with them. So, but now we have three uh, places that are already happy with us that we can get alliances with. So let's go ahead and get those up. An important note is that whenever you're making alliances, it's really important to establish your open borders before you make that alliance. I think with most alliances, you automatically get open borders with that person, but uh, you can actually get extra gold by doing the open borders first. So right here, I actually get two gold per turn, which is 60 gold in the long run, and then five gold immediately. So that's a little trick uh, to getting quick, quick uh, money and still establishing all the trade benefits and tourism benefits that you get from getting open borders and alliances. So as you can see, our relationship doing has actually made Lady Six Sky neutral with us. So we might be able to send a delegation. We were able to, we can actually now do friendship as well. We could actually get alliance as well. So let's try to do an economic alliance. So that little bit of uh, uh, relationship benefits have actually really increased our um, alliances and actually gotten tons of things going for us. So now they are very happy with us. And that was just a little bit of uh, manipulation based on this relationships tree uh, tab right here that you can look up once you hit click the civilization. All right, and now in currently in Megara, Megara, we're going to go ahead and probably purchase a settler here and escort it with this archer. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to settle on this woods like we talked about because there's a really great harbor right here. There's a plus four harbor right here. And then there's the opportunity for a couple uh, actual national parks around here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Send him and get linked up here and you're going to go straight up there. Thank you very much. So like we talked about, Seth really does need a harbor. Uh, that's gonna be our main source of production in this city. Uh, we can't really get anything through anything else. We only have 13 production right now. Uh, there's really no way we can improve that really, really well unless we get a harbor. So the best we can do is a plus three here. So let's go ahead and build that. 
All right, we've actually just circumnavigated the world as Greece. Very, very cool. We're gonna still explore with Ferdinand Magellan. Uh, really not much use for him right now, mainly because I already have copies of turtles and uh, whales, like I've talked about. I'm still on the lookout for pearls and uh, potentially amber that sometimes spawns on coastal tiles. All right, now we have our settler in position here to get a very good city that'll help us out with uh, getting up our national parks. So we're gonna go ahead and just found this city. And just as a quick reminder, go ahead and make sure to comment down below. Uh, that way you get a chance to name uh, one of these cities here on in my empire after yourself. Uh, if you don't want to name it after yourself, go ahead and give me a name suggestion down in the comments. I'd be happy to rename it for you. And in this city, we're going to go ahead and place down and start probably working on the granary at first. And then with this builder, we're probably going to purchase these crabs tiles. That way we can get the production using our God of the Sea Pantheon. Now I'm faced with the dilemma here with the settler. I could settle this city right here, but I have musket men right here on our borders. I'm not sure if I settle the city, if I'm going to be able to keep this city or if the barbarian Excuse me, if the barbarians are just going to raise it immediately. So let's go ahead and try to settle it and see what happens. All right, in Erte, we're going to purchase these two tiles. Uh, it's going to take me a long time to expand these tiles, so purchasing these now will actually get me more benefit because I get the production and the extra gold from having fishing houses. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase that tile and that tile and get these fishing boats online because now I'm earning two food, one production, and five gold from this one tile, and that five gold will pay back very quickly from this city. I also have a great person I can claim, my first great artist. So let's go ahead and recruit that. That's going to be awesome, getting our tourism started. Now, um, I think in Nero, we just finished up Renaissance Wall, so we're going to get working on a shipyard. That way we can get extra production in this city. So in our city of Miletos that we were worried about barbarians getting after, we actually have these spices, but there's actually woods underneath them. So what we can actually do is chop out these woods to get that ancient walls up quicker. So let's go ahead and do that. So that instantly built our ancient walls there. So now we can actually use that to take a city shot at these musket men so that they have lower combat strength now. Now thinking about this city here, I really think I need to now start looking at getting some holy sites up that could give me lots of faith return. Currently I have none. Uh, plus I have a plus four actually right here that I think I will need to utilize. Uh, it's a very great spot surrounded by four mountains. That'll be really useful. It kind of takes away from potentially a nice national park right here, but I think I can still get one here with the spices, getting a national park here. And then I can also get one right here, I believe too. So I think it'll be okay if I take this, uh, mainly because I really do need that faith return and start it early so that I can save up to get those naturalists pretty quickly. So with this trade route, we actually aren't able to go over to France like we have wanted. So I actually might transfer this to um, Nero or Tiny Dancer. That way I can get to someplace else. I think Tiny Dancer, um, yeah, let's put it in Tiny Dancer here. And we actually already have a trade route at Seth, but we're going to have this repeating. Um, we're going to do somewhere like Nero, mainly because we do right now have to get error score by completing trade routes. And this four turn uh, is going to really expedite those error score really quickly. So we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, we do have two more envoys still, and we still have the Diplomatic League card, which gives us the two envoys. So what we're gonna do is pop those into Amar and Fez, and we'll get those up pretty quickly. Actually, let's go ahead and pop it into Laventa. That way we can actually get Faith per turn. So we'll actually get two Faith per turn based on these two envoys that we're gonna send, and the envoys got, get put in them as well. All right, we got the World Congress now. Uh, great people points. Uh, let's go ahead and actually earn double for great riders, see if we can get those even quicker. Uh, I'm going to go put two in there because I really don't need that. And then spies, let's go ahead and choose uh, Siphon Funds. Um, maybe we can get our spy over to Siphon Funds after it's done with its mission now. That'd be really helpful for us. So Siphon Funds were there, and then double great people uh, points for scientists. That's unfortunate, but that works fine. Um, my actual spy actually just got a uh, successful uh, requiring of refining, so it stole a tech boost there. That's pretty cool. Using the last charger on this builder, we're going to go ahead and do that just in time because... Uh, these barbarians are trying to attack our city right here. I need to get rid of this field cannon. I think that's my highest threat. Uh, Musketman is going to be attacking across water, so I don't think that's that bad. Uh, but this guy will be able to hit us uh, without taking any damage to himself, so I want to get him down as quick as possible. All right, now I'm actually going to put my spy over in Chennai because there's a commercial hub that has almost 1,100 gold that I want to be able to steal. All right, in my trade route, I'm actually going to go for Laventa. Laventa, I can actually get an envoy here, and currently Laventa already only needs four envoys to take Suzerainty of it. So I really want to be looking at who I can take Suzerainty of. That way I can get that 5% culture boost uh, to my civilization right here based on the Surrounded by Glory uh, ability of uh, Pericles. All right, we actually got another settler in Tiny Dancer. I forgot that we were working on that. Uh, we can build another city somewhere, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking with this settler in Tiny Dancer, I'm actually going to purchase something to go with him and I'm actually going to send this guy all the way over to this city right over here because there is actually a very nice natural wonder right here that we could settle. Uh, and we might actually be able to get a very nice uh, 
harbor and stuff here and make it a very nice city here. So I'm thinking maybe if I settle right here, I can get a harbor here and then take all these tiles for myself. One thing I want to quickly mention is that uh, for civic boosts, you really want to make sure you are looking at the boosts that are going to the civic and how much you are currently working on that civic. So right now you can see in natural history, if I open up the civic tree, you can see that it takes me nine turns to get that. But if you look on this little thing over here, you can see that there's this little light purple bar. Uh, that's actually what I would get with my boost. So once this bar gets to the top again and makes a full circle, just this lighter unfilled part, I want to stop working natural history because currently I'm going to be working on a archaeology museum in here. So I can actually put that civic and that culture to another civic and not have to use up that culture for something else. Uh, that's really, really helpful for you uh, if you're building uh, empires and making sure you want to get through the tech in civic trees as quick as possible. The same thing applies to Eureka. So industrialization, if I had three workshops uh, or I'm building three workshops and I'm on my third one and don't have it yet and don't have this boost here in a couple turns, once this reaches all the way up here, I would want to stop working industrialization, get the boost and I would automatically get that tech. So it's a very, very good way to get through your tech tree. So make sure you're doing that on your tech and civic boosts. All right, now we have two more envoys, and we actually only have two more city-states that actually have zero uh, envoys in them. So we're going to put one in uh, Fez and one in Geneva, and then we'll get the two envoys in each one of those. Like I said, now we have two envoys in each one of those. But now what we want to do is next time we unlock a civic, we will actually want to change out diplomatically because it's not going to be beneficial for us anymore because there's no times that we'll be sending our first envoy to a city-state anymore. So next time we do that, next time we have a civilization... Next time we have a civic change, we'll want to go ahead and do that. So now, as you can see, natural history, I only have, I have almost the boost to the top. So I think on this next turn, it'll transfer over to the very top here. Uh, embassy is welcome. Thank you, Gandhi. Let's look at that real quick, see if that works here. Yes. So now I want to stop working the, uh, stop working this civic here because I do have that nat uh, natural history, not natural history museum, archaeology museum being completed. That's going to be completed in nine turns. So I want to go to something else such as one of these lower civics and go ahead and get one of those. So actually something like getting up Merchant Republic would actually be a good idea for me, uh, mainly because Merchant Republic is a better government than what I currently have. What I currently have um, is a uh, Monarchy, which gives me three military policy slots. I really don't need that. Uh, it's nice to have conscription. I don't have too many units, though. Limes is nice for building up um, building up walls to get that tourism. Veterancy is good, but conscription is something I really don't need, and I can actually use a wildcard policy instead. So that'll be actually more beneficial if I actually had Merchant Republic. So we'll probably switch over to that. So in our the city of Chennai, we're actually going to be siphoning funds. Hopefully we can get that gold. That'll help us out a ton, give us tons of money to be able to buy things. And right now we actually have enough money to buy things in uh, our some of our other cities as well, such as Tiny Dancer. We could get up a archaeology museum or something like that. We could also get the university or even arena, which would be good for uh, some nice uh, amenities. But what I think we're really going to do is get a shipyard here in Sparta. That'll be really helpful for us in getting production. This city will expedite its uh, production per turn. And then maybe we look at something to get some housing in here because this city is actually almost reaching its housing limit now. So one important thing to do is sometimes if you have enough amenities in your empire, selling off amenities is actually going to be really important, especially for cities like Montezuma, who is very, very focused on wanting luxury resources. As you can see here, if I trade him one olive, um, I can actually get citrus and tobacco as well as seven gold per turn just by trading this one luxury away and i get two more luxuries uh those are and just a note when you're trading luxuries with the ai they will only trade you luxuries if you have more they have more than one luxury if i try to trade salt this little thing's uh there's an offer block uh, that they won't be able to trade that away. So uh, this is the best you're going to be able to do. Uh, and you want to make sure you get luxuries that you currently don't already have, because if you have more than one luxury, it does not duplicate unless there is a, uh, a special bonus for that sieve or uh, during a World Congress, you can vote for that to have double amenities as well. So this is actually a really good deal. So we're going to go ahead and do this and get seven gold per turn, get the tobacco and get the citrus. It'll be really nice for our economy. So now we can change our government policies around. So what we're going to do is go ahead and take out Diplomatic League and now put in, I think a good thing to do is Charismatic Leader. Uh, that'll give us two uh, two points per turn towards earning on Envoys, which will be really great for us. Now in Seth, we need to get, choose some production. I'm actually going to probably work on Medieval Walls. I would probably go for a Shipyard, but the thing is, is that this is actually going to probably be better for me to actually purchase rather than get production on, mainly because it's going to take me 13 turns to build. Uh, the main thing you want to look at, uh, whether purchasing a district or building a district is roughly on the normal standard settings on DED. If it takes you more than 10 turns, it's more cost effective to purchase it with gold than it is to build it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on medieval walls, save up the gold in that time, and then purchase the shipyard for 11,000 gold, 1100 gold. Uh, so that's going to be way more cost effective because it's only going to take me two turns to get that gold up so I can get that production in Seth. So we'll go ahead and start working on the medieval walls. That way we can get tours a month. 
So I just made that tribal village and I got a free trader. I was not expecting that. Usually, I don't know if I've seen a free trader from a tribal village. So that's very, very cool and unique. Now we just got exploration, which means we can unlock the Merchant Republic card, meaning that I think we're going to keep limes in as we are building a bunch of buildings uh, for that. Uh, veterancy, I think, is something we still need, uh, mainly because we have harbors coming online. So getting those lighthouses and things is going to be important. Uh, but we want, might want to do is look at either naval infrastructure or aesthetics. Aesthetics would increase our culture per turn, which will be really helpful for us. Um, that'll be good for us to get. Let's see. I don't think anything else really helps us right now, except for something. Yeah, no, I think aesthetics is the way to go here. That'll really help us boost our uh, culture per turn. Now, choosing our next civic, I'm actually going to go for the open opera and ballet that we can, we can potentially get the Bolshoi Theater. That is going to be a great wonder for us to potentially build. And like I said, natural philosophy we, and natural history, we are holding off because if we hold, uh, it only takes us four turns. But as you can see, with the boost for getting an archaeology museum, we actually unlock natural history automatically. So we're going to get pretty quickly too. Now in our capital, uh, we can get the university. That'll help us out getting some extra science, keeping us in the game there, uh, making sure we get those civics and everything like that. Because currently, I don't think anyone has rock or tree discovered, which is great for us. Uh, that's important to keep an eye on because we will want to make sure we get a culture victory before someone else gets a scientific victory. It's really important to make sure you take care and look at all these other um, things here to make sure that no one else is going to take over and win underneath you. Now that we've saved a bunch of gold in the city of Seth, we can go ahead and purchase that shipyard. And then next we can purchase something else as well or begin working on the art or archaeology museum in here, which will be fantastic for us. And we got one more turn for the archaeology museum, so we're going to get that natural history up and running. All right, we actually got that siphon funds and got 1,200 gold. That's actually really great for us. So now in the city of Seth, we can actually just go ahead and purchase an art or archaeology museum. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to do archaeology museum in here, uh, which will be perfect for us. That way we can get archaeologists out and get those up and going. That'll be really great for us. Uh, that way we can uh, get those nice little um, artifacts up and get those going in our empire. So in the city of Sparta, currently I have room to make another uh, district, but you can see I don't have an Acropolis in here and I can build one. Uh, I can't build one right now, but what if I can actually swap here and I can actually get an Acropolis right on that tile and it'll actually be a very good one. If you look here, uh, I can actually get a plus three Acropolis right here, which would be fantastic for that city. Uh, getting those Acropolis up is going to really expedite our culture per turn and get us closer to a culture victory. Now in Chennai, we just got that uh, Siphon Fund, so let's go ahead and do it immediately again. Actually, I do have the promotion for Siphon Funds and Karn Artists, so we're actually going to get that real quick and make it even easier for Siphon's Funds. Uh, currently, right now, I have a uh, the World Congress that allows me to active has active effects of its operates at two levels higher, so now it'll operate at four levels higher. And then once the um, actual boost for it in the World Congress is gone, I'll still have that plus two. Now with this builder in Seth, I'm actually going to send him over to Tiny Dancer because Tiny Dancer currently has a housing limit. Uh, what's really important in your cities is you want to make sure you have extra housing. That way your city can grow and expand. Right now, if we look at our city, we actually have um, some penalties because of reaching our housing limit. Let's go ahead and see where we can see that. So as you can see, we have our housing limit here. We actually have our population growth slowed to 11 uh, down 75%, which is very, very hindering on getting tall cities. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a settler, uh, a builder here, send them over to Tiny Dancer. And then there's three places I can get some uh, farms. I can get a bonus rice here, and then I can get two farms here so we can get those online, get some extra housing for ourselves, as well as fishing tile here. All right, my alliances have run out this turn. So we're going to go back through, declare our friendships, get our open borders, make sure we do that first. That way we can get some extra gold from that and then do our alliances. And with that, we actually get the uh, Grand Opera, which we can actually get extra culture. Uh, if we have uh, plus three adjacency, we get plus 50%. And then if we have population of 10 or hybrid, we get also plus 50% uh, adjacency. I think now is probably the time we can actually take out natural philosophy. I don't think we need the science as much. Uh, we can get it through other means. Uh, we can get it through trade routes. We can get it through potentially other things as well. So I think doing that and putting in Grand Opera will help out our culture quite a bit. So let's go ahead and confirm that policy, see what that does. So yeah, that bumps us up to 132 culture per turn, drops us down in science but i think that's okay uh mainly because we aren't going for a scientific win and i don't think anyone's gotten rocketry yet we actually all ourselves pretty close to getting rocketry if we really want it but no one else is close no one else is going for a scientific win it looks like right now so i think we're in a good spot there so let's go ahead and keep getting this builder up in tiny dancer he's going to get our housing so that we can actually grow a population a little bit more in tiny dancer because population is helpful uh for getting your cities up higher uh that way you can build more districts and things like that uh with uh, Ferdinand Magellan, I think I've explored almost all of the map and I have not found any either pearls or amber or anything like that. All there seems to be in this world is uh, turtles, 
or uh, whales. So unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to settle for one of them um, and then sell the other thing to AI or something like that. But I think I'm gonna do it now because I can get 300 gold from that and that 300 gold will help me get things like uh, archeologists and stuff. So unfortunately the settler we're gonna send over here, I did not realize it actually, um, it looks like Australia actually settled a city here. So unfortunately we won't be able to do that. So what we might do actually is send him down here to this wheat tile because I actually have, a, it's on a little tiny river. So it actually gets the bonus for being on a river so I can get plus five housing immediately in the city. And then this might actually be good appeal wise uh, for a national park or two. So this might be a good city to snag. Getting a city here is also very, very helpful for getting up trade routes to things like uh, I can send one to the Aztecs, Spain, or even just Australia itself right right here and use this as a trading hub. All right, now that we've got natural history up, we've got opera and ballet up. Now I think we need to go straight for conservation. Conservation allows us to build national parks and then allows us to purchase naturalists. And it also allows uh, builders to plant woods. And uh, woods are very helpful because woods actually add appeal to uh, tiles. So say if you are on a tundra tile, like right here, this one has very uh, charming appeal. But if I was to add a wood here, it adds one appeal. So it actually would put it at three appeal, which actually is the requirement for national parks. If you look up national parks here using the Civilpedia, National parks must be built on a tile with appeal of charming or better. And charming appeal is actually three appeal, which would be perfect. And this will actually create the ability to actually have appeal straight from there. And I can get a national park right on these tiles, which would be fantastic for us. So now that we've unlocked natural history museum, we need to save up for our, um, archaeologist so that those are roughly 1600 gold per turn uh per archaeologist so we want to save a ton of gold for that uh, we can also build them but it's quite slow to build them um, and then we'll also want to be starting to save up for builders because conservation is going to unlock those national parks uh, and we'll want the faith for that so we started getting our faith up per turn we have 11 currently uh we're going to get a very very good holy site here in melitos uh that'll help us out that'll give us plus four per turn uh and then we can get try to get some from other things as well we are getting some from envoys as well which is very helpful but i think that's actually where we're going to currently end this episode uh i think we've made some good progress we're getting to the t uh the turnaround where we're actually starting to get culture per turn we are starting to get um some uh some tourism as well not as quickly as we would have wanted but we are getting it and we i think we're going to be pretty good because i think we are one of the few cities that are actually earning great people and actually are getting um these great writers artists and musicians i don't think many other cities are actually going for them many of them don't even have many um many if at all any theater squares so that's actually really really great for us so i'm going to leave it there uh be sure to like and uh, subscribe that way you guys can stay tuned for the series as well as comment down below for your chance to be named after a city and if you don't want to be named after your username go ahead and leave me a suggestion for your name and i'll put that down for you well with that said you guys have a great one and i'll see you guys next time bye